Hi, I'm Senator Roger Cobb. On this month's Capitol Report, I'd like to show you a video highlighting our veterans through the monuments in their honor that are placed in and near the state capitol. Michigan's capital is, is rich with history, and that quickly becomes clear when you learn the story behind the monuments we have at our capital. From the Grand Plaza honoring veterans of the Vietnam War to the proud blue spruce symbolizing those who are prisoners of war or missing in action, you will see that every monument has a story to tell. In the next 20 minutes, we'll take you to our state capital to learn about Michigan's rich history of service during wartime, and I hope you enjoy it. J. Wise. I was a young farmer's son from the small town of Ypsilanti, Michigan. At the age of 18, I volunteered into Company C of Burden's first United States sharpshooters to fight against the secessionists and tyranny. I proudly served my country. Through countless skirmishes and battles. During my service, I saw felt hardships that no person should ever experience. At times, I felt I could not endure, but I kept going on. I was driven by, by my, my duty, duty to, to my, my country, country and commitment to my fellow soldiers. Soldiers from every background, race, gender, and religion. From small villages and big cities. Servicemen who sacrifice every, every day, day their time, their families' needs, and their lives. My name is Corporal Nile Yates III, a graduate of Lakewood High School in Lake Odessa, Michigan. At the young age of 22, all my hopes and dreams ended when I lost my life in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Like all my brothers and sisters who have fallen, served, or are now serving, I ask of you one thing to always remember those who have sacrificed for you and your freedom. In today's busy world, how can we remind ourselves of the sacrifices of our veterans, both past and present? Watching a documentary film, or reading a book, or even researching sites on the internet are easy ways to learn and remember. Attending lectures, ceremonies, and parades are other ways. Even taking a moment to reflect on our everyday freedoms or personally acknowledging a veteran or a member of the armed services honors them and reminds us. Another traditional way to remember and honor those who have served our country is through monuments and memorials. When we think of veterans' monuments, we usually think of bronze statues, granite markers, or imposing structures. However, gardens and parks, rooms, buildings, and events can serve as memorials as well. Some monuments and memorials, such as the World War II Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., are large and impressive. Others, such as this Civil War monument in Benzonia, Michigan, may be smaller but still serve the same compelling purpose, to remind us of those who sacrificed for us and for our way of life. Although some veterans' monuments are secluded, others command prominent sites on former battlefields, in public squares, at state capitals, or on their grounds. 
How did the Michigan State Capitol acquire its veterans memorials and its monuments and where are they located? My name is Major General William Rufus Shafter, a farmer's son and former school teacher from Galesburg, Michigan. Being determined to rid the country of slavery and keep our union together, I heeded the call from President Lincoln for volunteers in 1861. I formed a company of infantry and joined the 7th Michigan Volunteer Infantry Regiment. With this, I began my military career in the Army, which lasted some four decades culminating in the Spanish-American War in 1898. Welcome to the first segment of the tour, our capital's Civil War and Spanish-American War monuments and memorials. Easily the most recognizable monument is the Capitol building itself. Completed in 1879, it was designed not only as a seat of state government, but also as a symbol of the state and a shrine to the sacrifices of our Civil War veterans. Because the current capital was built in the years soon after the Civil War, and because the war had such a profound impact on all of us, our veterans had a prominent role in the design of the capital and the location of many of the monuments. Over 90,000 Michigan citizens, or one in four of all males in the state, volunteered for service during the war, making it one of the highest per capita rates of any Union state. My fellow volunteers fought with great distinction in every skirmish and battle throughout the terrible conflict. Upon entering the first floor of the rotunda, the most prominent point of the building, you can notice the historic battle flags carried by Michigan regiments during the war. Until recently, over 160 Civil War flags were displayed in the glass cases circling the rotunda. Flags carried during the later Spanish-American War and World War I are displayed in other cases. These battle-stained flags were cherished by the veterans because they signified the duty and sacrifice that the soldiers gave not only to their country, but also to each other. Because of deterioration, the original flags were moved to the Michigan Historical Center, where they are now being preserved. Located near the flag display cases are plaques that list the number of men who served in each regiment and the number of losses from combat and disease, a figure totaling 14,753 men and officers. Located on the third floor in the west wing of the Capitol is the House of Representatives Appropriations Committee Room. After the Capitol's restoration and rededication on November 19, 1992, this room was dedicated to Michigan veterans, past, present, and future. Today, this room is also called the Veterans Room. Located on the west wall of the room is a display case with banners of various veterans groups. 